how's everybody doing? All right, good to see everybody here. It's been a while since I've done one of these, so bear with me. It's been about four years, I think, since I've talked in front of people, so thank you uh, uh, for coming and attending, and I hope you get some uh, good information out of this. All right, well, we'll go ahead and kick it off with just a little bit about me. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I've been working in open source for a while now, uh, primarily in FreeBSD-based uh, projects. I've worked with FreeBSD, PCBSD, TrueOS, FreeNAS, and TrueNAS. I've worn many different hats over the years, being in marketing, documentation, programming, and web design at various projects. And I've been working with IX Systems, if you're familiar with them, uh, for a collective total of about 12 years. All right. So how many of you are familiar with IX Systems? Uh, have you all heard of us? Good. OK, cool. So basically, IX Systems were known as a company that stewards open source uh, projects. We've done many over the years. And um, our primary project right now is TrueNAS and TrueNAS Scale. Uh, we also have uh, cost-effective systems, and we produce all of those here in the USA and support them as well here. <laughs> I heard a woohoo out there. <laughs> all righty. So the purpose of this talk is really to talk about why we decided to uh, not only have a FreeBSD product, but why did we swipe right on Linux? I know that I've seen a lot of you over the years, and you've probably known me as one of the BSD guys. Uh, so <laughs> it's uh, very nice to be able to come to a Linux conference, and we actually have something based on Linux now. So yeah. <laughs> All right. To give you a little bit of the background, um, on our product, I think that helps set the stage. We started out with FreeNAS, and FreeNAS is a FreeBSD-based product. A lot of people are familiar with it, I'd imagine, here in this room. And we also were producing TrueNAS at around the same time. But what we actually realized was that we were maintaining documentation, we were maintaining separate code bases, separate ISOs, separate build systems. Um, Everything was very disconnected. And so what we started to, to realize is if we could actually streamline this a little bit, what we could actually do is unify it under one brand and be able to actually <clears throat> and be able to actually gain some efficiency there. Bear with me just a moment. All right, so that unification happened about uh, two and a half years ago when we unified FreeNAS and TrueNAS together. Um, we did gain those efficiencies that I talked about, but then we also realized that there was rapidly a lot of customers approaching us and saying, hey, we actually need a solution that's not only going to scale up, but we're also looking for something uh, that can scale out. So I've already included this definition, uh, not trying to insult anyone's intelligence, but just to provide contrast uh, between a traditional NAS and a next generation NAS, which is what your NAS scale is. Network attached storage is data storage that connects to and is accessed through a network instead of directly um, connecting to a computer. A NAS consists of computer hardware and an operating system, so it provides the intelligence needed for files to be easily shared. What we like to say is the definition of network attached storage is actually evolving. It's, it's changing. Because where people with a traditional NAS said, hey, I just want some, some storage I can plug into my network, and then I can actually uh, just access it from anywhere on my network. Well, TrueNAS Scale takes uh, our product TrueNAS, it takes all of the things that it can inherit, inherit from that, it has OpenZFS, um, it has LANs, VLANs, clustering, VPNs and clouds that we've actually added to TrueNAS Scale. 
It also has virtual machines, containers, um, native Docker support, and Kubernetes pods. And of course, it still has the traditional NAS there. Uh, you'll see under storage, file, block, and object. So all of the different types of, of data that you would want to move around, you can certainly do so. But as you can see, it works out exactly the same way. If you look on the screen, it's still NAS, network, apps, and storage. And so that's how we like to say the definition of NAS is evolving, because we're adding uh, quite a bit to it. And here we go, we have Tux is very happy. You know, he's got four hearts up on the screen. They look like they're from The Legend of Zelda. And he's very happy because finally, uh, TrueNAS Core is, uh, uh, has added Debian Linux, and that gives us TrueNAS Scale. All right, so what is Scale? Uh, TrueNAS Scale is actually an acronym. So Scale stands for Scale Out ZFS. It's a single file system scaled out across multiple nodes. It's a converged infrastructure. You're going to have a lot of different things you can do in one place. It's always available storage. So you can definitely set it up where uh, you have high availability and you're able to um, draw on that to make sure you don't have downtime. And then, of course, there's the Linux base, uh, which is Debian, and containers that we've added. And E is actually pretty easy to use. If you've ever used FreeNAS or TrueNAS, it's actually going to be quite the same uh, experience. <laughs> All right, now I put on this slide right here, we've got core and scale actually right beside each other. And you can see when you look at the uh, typical use cases, we say for core non-critical storage. If people are actually running a business and they want to have mission critical storage data that they cannot conduct their business without, um, Core is not necessarily a recommendation. You also have scale over here, which says scale out storage with VMs and containers. But again, that's not necessarily an enterprise product. Not yet. <laughs> we'll talk more about that later. Both are community supported. And you can see on hardware, it's compatible with third party hardware and IX systems uh, hardware if you order directly from us. All right, so now for more of the story, why did we actually swipe right on Linux? Uh, containerization was a highly popular feature request. And unfortunately with FreeBSD, uh, we had a situation where what works well, works well. Unfortunately, there's not a good solution for us uh, if you're talking about Docker containers, uh, Kubernetes. Now you do have FreeBSD jails, which are great. You can set those up in a number of ways. Um, that's very, very useful. But at the same time, it doesn't provide that rich app store experience that some people might be looking for if they want to add applications over their network. We also had a greater pool of solutions that we could actually draw on uh, from having Debian Linux as the base. So at that point, I believe in TrueNAS Core, we only had about 15 to 16 plugins that people could use. Well, that's great, but it's just not much to choose from, and people wanted a lot more diversity. We were able to unify a lot of different pieces, too, a lot of different puzzle pieces together, and that's what really gave us the um, entire, uh, entire TrueDes scale, the entire finished product. Then, of course, we also talked about apps and plugins a little bit already. And uh, the plugins on TrueNAS Core were actually about to get deprecated because it didn't seem like they were holding up quality-wise. Even the 15 or 16 that were available, they just weren't a great quality. So that's when we were scratching our heads at first and we said, well, what are we going to do? Because we've always been a FreeBSD shop, that's what people expect. So if we were to build a Linux product, you know, we don't want to alienate our, our fan base or anything like that. But at the same time, there's definitely business reasons. There's definitely reasons just for people who want to use the software where they want a solution like this. So we talked about scaling out a little bit earlier, but we didn't go into too much detail. But scaling out wasn't an option with FreeBSD. It's just simply not available. Um, 
just not able to do that whatsoever. So when we talk about scaling out, um, how many people know what I'm talking about? Okay. So for the rest of the room, if, if you're not too familiar with the concept, it's basically just saying you have a multi-node infrastructure. Instead of having one system where you have the data, you're constantly adding disks and you're trying to get headroom, that way you're adding capacity just by adding more disks. What you can do with scaling out is you can actually have multiple nodes working in concert as one system. So uh, that's the way that TrueNet scale works. You can start with one system, add more systems in there. Guess what? You gain extra capacity. So that's how we add it there. Uh, there's also the concept of high availability. For, for our customers, they require high availability. And this is available through FreeBSD. But a lot, a lot of people don't necessarily know that the, the version of high availability in TrueNAS Core is active-passive. So if one goes online, the other will boot up. It'll take a while for it to come up, maybe a minute or two, and then you're back in, in business. But when we, leave a, when we live in a world where you cannot have any downtime, I think five nines is the maximum that people want to allow, right? So um, it's really, really important uh, to people, especially our business customers, that we have that type of a solution. Um, because TrueNet Scale is Linux-based, we are able to take advantage of active-active um, high availability, which means that if something, uh, one controller goes on, offline, we should be able to just bring up that other controller just immediately and seamlessly and just keep on doing what we were doing before. And then, of course, dynamic development. Uh, I think it's no secret that uh, Linux has a bigger ecosystem, a lot more people working on it than FreeBSD. And so because of that, we can take advantage of having drivers just made for us and we can pull them in. Whereas before, we were having to do a lot of work on drivers and uh, different kinds of tools inside the operating system. So this made it very easy for us to, to be able to roll out a solution. And I'd be lying if I said there wasn't any commercial benefits for IX systems. Uh, so, <laughs> so we can talk about those a little bit. Uh, we want to grow our community. And you know, while we have all of these people that are FreeBSD fans and uh, FreeNAS and TrueNAS fans in the past um, that are very excited about the product being FreeBSD, Linux is the biggest open source community. You know, and this is just something we want to take advantage of. We want to spread you know, the, we, we want to tell everybody about the uh, uh, wonderful things about TrueNAS. And so by doing that, we hope that we can grow our community. Widespread adoption, that kind of plays into the same point before, where it's used everywhere all over the world. Linux is the most popular uh, operating system at this point. And then, of course, technologies and resource management. Linux offers us a comprehensive mix of tools and technologies that allowed us to uh, be able to resource manage efficiently and just pull those in to make one complete solution like we were talking about. And what I'll do is I'll show you, I don't know if it's the next slide, but I'll show you how the pieces kind of fit together to make, make one product. Yep, it is the next slide right here. Very good. So of course you have the software infrastructure that we already developed, which was TrueNAS. Um, it was not hard for us to necessarily adapt it to Linux. Um, it's, most of it is written in Python, so there's, there's uh, uh, a good bit of it that was just very portable for us. Of course, you have Debian as the Linux kernel. That's going to be the kernel that's, that's running TrueNAS scale. You have OpenZFS 2.0, and that gives it snapshots and self-healing. That's native to Z, uh, ZFS. We're using Gluster underneath as the scale-out infrastructure. Uh, by using Gluster, we're able to do some pretty interesting things uh, like we were talking about with the multi-node systems or having multiple systems um, all acting as one. We use MinIO for simple and scalable object storage, so that's a piece of the puzzle as well. And then, of course, we have Kubernetes in native Docker. So it is a native Docker instance, um, by the way, so that's very beneficial. There's nothing hacky going on here. It's uh, actually just native. You have an S3 API. You can interface with a lot of different S3 services, which is very beneficial. 
Oh, and number eight. I don't want to forget number eight. Of course, you can run virtual machines uh, in KVM. So if you want to use it as a light hypervisor, absolutely you can do that. TrueNet Scale is open source, and this just kind of says, puts, puts the different pieces into categories. For our open storage and the protocols we use for that, we're using SMB, NFS, iSCSI, S3 API, OpenZFS, Gluster, like we talked about in MinIO uh, for our open storage. And for open virtualization, you can use Kubernetes, uh, Debian's a part of that, and KVM. As far as the open APIs, we have a REST API and WebSocket APIs. Uh, also under there is Kubernetes and Helm charts. One thing that comes up sometimes is people say, well, how do you get around the licensing uh, of it? Because I know that there was a big hubbub not too long ago about people saying, well, how do you, sh how do you ship ZFS with an actual kernel, uh, actual Linux kernel? Uh, my understanding, and I'm not the smartest person on this, so, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, take this with a grain of salt. But my understanding is, is as long as they are shipped separately, as separate pieces, um, they can be put back together afterwards. So um, that's kind of what we're doing here. The rest of the software is a mix of BSD, MIT, and GPL licenses. One thing that we like to talk about, too, um, I just saw this on this slide, is we like to say we have a huge testing community as well because our community, our community is about 500,000 active members. So TrueNet Scale provides a storage, a scale-out storage system that's easy to use. It has the reliability of Linux and ZFS. Patch management, community and professional support is available. And it's the proven platform of TrueNAS. I know a lot of you have used TrueNAS either at home or at work. And if you are familiar with using TrueNAS Core or TrueNAS Enterprise, then you are going to be very familiar with navigating scale. It's not going to be too, too far of a reach for you. It also has simple upgrades. Uh, pretty much all of that is automatic for you. So you, there's not a lot to manage. You just have to give it the, uh, give it the go. You have to say, OK, yeah, I do want to update. All right, and by creating TrueNAS Scale, we've also kind of improved a lot of the feature set that people were um, experiencing with TrueNAS Core, our FreeBSD version. So you have the web GUI and web UI updates. Um, really, it's not necessarily been improved as much as adapted. So that one is a little bit of a misnomer there. But um, the software goes through hundreds of QA cycles and thousands of tests before it even gets to the QA uh, branch at IX Systems. So that's very, very, uh, you can have confidence when you, you hear that there's that much testing going on. There's improved version control and different trains you can use. So if you want applications and things of that nature on your NAS as the application layer, then you're going to have a lot of different options there. We talked about our community earlier, how we have a rather large community, over half a million people that are active. Our project management is completely open. If you want to influence the project, all you have to do is just go online to our JIRA tracker. And uh, we've got links. Uh, I don't know if we have that particular link, but you can go to uh, truenas.com and it'll, it'll get you linked over to the right place if you want to look at that. We have hundreds of people um, every month that are giving us feature requests. And then we use like an up di uh, upvote feature so that the community can say, yeah, this sounds like a great idea. We should do this. We're not looking to be like a corporate overlord or anything like that. We really let the community decide uh, what direction they want to go. We also have the REST API and CLI. It's a very robust CLI and API. So if you need to script things, you are going to have a lot of options. And then lastly on this slide, we have true command multi-system management. Now, True Command historically, this is our single pane of glass management solution. If you're running a fleet of TrueNAS or FreeNAS systems, you can actually use True Command to manage all of them just from one central place. We did have to adapt the software a little bit so that it would work with, with True Command, uh, being that it was different, had a different kernel, but it is completely compatible across all editions of TrueNAS.
Now, as far as apps and catalogs, um, what, what we do is we actually call like our uh, uh, app store kind of like a catalog. That's what we do because it's home charts, really, uh, when you get down to it. But we have three different ones you can actually go with. You've got one that's for the community over here, that train on the far right. And those are really apps that the community are creating. It, we've made it very easy if they want to bring in apps and be developers on them, they can do that. Now, when something becomes official, this is the best of the best in the community. And so what will happen is a community app will get promoted into official. If it's just a developer is showing like, hey, I'm really involved with this and I want to own it, then that's what's going to happen. It'll get promoted. And then enterprise is the, the best of all of those. Uh, we've basically done our own QA. We've looked at it ourselves and we say, hey, yes, uh, we believe you can have this inside enterprise. There's no security risks. There's nothing like that. So that's, that's a good thing. We do all that vetting for you. And this is just one example. It only shows what can fit on the screen, but you've got hundreds, even thousands to choose from, of course. Uh, very similar to a Linux App Store experience. Over here, if you look in the top right, you can also um, launch Docker images yourself. If you have an image that's maybe not listed here uh, or something of that nature, you're able to customize, uh, bring in custom ones. So that's also very useful. All right, I've got a few questions that people usually ask me when this comes up. And the very first one is if you're a free BSD person and you've started listening to this talk, don't freak out, okay? TrueNAS Core isn't going anywhere. We're actually maintaining both TrueNAS Core and TrueNAS Scale simultaneously, and we have the resources to be able to do that. So because we are supporting both of them, we're not leaving FreeBSD. Free we're just kind of joining the Linux community uh, so that we can have those, those, both of those different types of products. Is there a reason I should choose core over scale? And the answer to that is really, it depends. Uh, if you have a system, you just want it to be storage. You know, TrueNAS core is great for that. If all you want to do is just move files around, it's absolutely a, a good choice for you. Also with it being FreeBSD, um, I've, all, I've told some of, you, some of you that have come to our booth, I've told you, well, it's really a good thing to be using TrueNAS core if that's all you need. Because the benefit is it's less of a surface area to attack. It's free BSD. Um, but yeah, you can run that. And if you want a richer app experience, then you're actually going to want to uh, use TrueNAS Scale. Another thing about TrueNAS Core that's interesting to think about is we've been using ZFS inside FreeNAS and TrueNAS. Um, FreeNAS was the predecessor to TrueNAS. But we've been using it for about the last 10 years. So it's very, very mature. The cool thing is, is with the development of scale and with OpenZFS kind of being shared between FreeBSD and uh, Linux now, it's really beneficial for us because if we upstream something on the FreeBSD side, then it actually we can get the same benefit over on the Linux side. It tends to be very compatible. All right, well, we talked about IX systems a little bit at the beginning, but just to uh, Put in a shameless plug real quick, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and talk about this. So IX Systems started and is pioneering many open source initiatives. We're actually a company that's been around for about 20 years, a little over. Um, a lot of people still haven't heard of us necessarily, and that's okay. We tend to compete with people like HP, HPE, uh, NetApp, Pure Storage, and that kind of thing. So if you're familiar with those, that's, that's uh, our competitors. We provide very high quality systems at competitive prices. We've actually had a number of analysts look at our solutions and say, yeah, you guys tend to be about half the cost and provide twice the value uh, when you compare us up against the Dells and the NetApps of the world. And I think I already talked about that a little bit, but we do have our manufacturing facility in San Jose, California, and we have our growing team of support for professionals and developers out of Tennessee and us marketing folks. Right? So, yeah. Maryville, represent. All right. <laughs> All righty here. So looking over this, you'll actually see two different software naming schemes. And 
The one on the left is actually going to be traditional TrueNAS Enterprise, where it says TrueNAS 13.0-U4. If you look on the right, you'll see Bluefin 22.12.2. Uh, we decided to go with fish names. It wasn't a marketing decision. It, this was actually our lead developer, loves fish. And uh, he even had a saltwater tank for a while. So uh, whatever we have a new version of scale, it has to be some type of fish. Uh, but as you can see right now, we're encouraging people, if you're working in an enterprise environment, we're going to be coming out with TrueNAS Scale Enterprise very, very soon. But it's not ready quite yet. This is really for enterprise people to be looking at right here. You can see under general release, it's saying it's coming soon. So keep an ear to the ground on that if you're interested in using it at work. Um, you will be able to do that soon, uh, probably in the next three to four months. Alrighty, so we have some important links and resources that you all can go to if you want to ask more questions um, about TrueNAS scale or just learn more about it. We also have a robust, robust set of documentation that you can go through. It's going to tell you how to use the API, how to use the CLI, and of course anything else under the sun related to TrueNAS that you want to know. So we will go ahead and we'll share these uh, uh, slides online afterwards. Um, in case you all want to kind of browse through that and look at some of these links. All right, and as far as the interface goes, I've just got a couple of short videos in here. They're just small clips, but you can kind of see what it looks like when you're interacting with TrueNAS here. You've got a lot of resource-related, resource management things here on this front screen, on this dashboard. Then you can go into your storage, set up your pools however you want, same way that you do with traditional TrueNAS. And this one is just kind of showing the app experience here and what you can do if you uh, want to set it up. There's not a lot to it. Once you click the install button, you've also got additional advanced options that you can use if you want to set custom flags and things of that nature. You can do so here on that screen. Very good. All right. As you can see, I moved through my slides way too quick. Uh, <laughs> but you know, that's great, because if we have additional questions, I like doing more Q&A anyways. I think that that's, you get a lot of good information. Uh, did you have a question? So once, so once a enterprise is, scale enterprise is released, uh, are you going to be able to do an upgrade from the uh, previous version of TrueNAS scale uh, by just switching channels and then uh, that way? Yeah, yeah, you will be able to do so. Mm -hmm. The question was, is once TrueNAS uh, Scale Enterprise comes out, will you be able to go from TrueNAS Scale, just the open source edition, and upgrade to the Enterprise Edition of Scale? And the answer to that is yes, you will be able to. Yeah. I should put a caveat there. Uh, for you to go to Enterprise, you do, have to, uh, you do have to actually have Enterprise hardware for Mike systems. Yeah. So you can't just like buy a license and, and add it on if you're just a community user. So yeah. my question um, was related to the high availability. You talked a little bit about how Gluster can help with that, um, but can you go into more detail about how the apps and uh, VMs are highly available? Like, is it a true multi-node Kubernetes, and is there like live migration, stuff like that? Absolutely, yeah. So I think the heart of your question was basically around the clustering and high availability, and does it encompass everything, including apps um, on the system? The answer to that is yes. Um, it, it certainly does. And the beauty of it is, is it's just like our high availability on our traditional systems, on our scale-up systems. The only difference is now you have scale-out high availability. So if you lose one node, you've still got the other two that are going to keep the, yeah, keep all that information for you. Yeah, good question, though. Can you put that last page back up, useful links? Yeah, absolutely. Let's put that up here. There we go. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you had the um, uh, containers for Docker and et cetera, but 
Uh, does it have uh, LXD containers or any other type of containers in it? I, I'm not too familiar with LXD containers. Um, is that just like a specific type? Uh, it's like jails for Linux. Gotcha. Okay. I'm not entirely sure about that one, but I will find out an answer for you. <laughs> I promise. Good deal. But thank you for the question. Yeah. All righty. Anybody else have any questions about TrueNAS scale and the reasons we uh, decided to finally swipe right on Linux? Yeah. Thanks. Um, I was wondering, uh, one of the things that I really liked about, uh, tru uh, about TrueNAS Core was the uh, support for uh, boot environments. And as I recall, with uh, Linux, that's an, uh, sort of like a bit of a separate project due to you know, some of the issues there. But I uh, wanted to double check, is that so are boot environments supported in TrueNAS scale? Or, and, and if so, just you know, are they using that project? Or I was curious about yeah, are, are you saying boot environments? Uh, boot environments? Correct. Yeah. So. The way that TrueNAS works, core or scale, you can you certainly have like one disk that is just for your configuration, um, and and that's your boot drive basically. So that is exactly the same in scale as it is in core. Uh, we always tell people if you're going to install FreeNAS or TrueNAS, sorry, not FreeNAS, TrueNAS or TrueNAS scale, um, you know you do want to make sure that you just install it on the hardware itself. Um, uh, you don't want to have multiple distros running at the same time because it doesn't handle those well. Yeah. Did that answer your question or? Um, okay. Not quite. Uh, okay. I guess my question was more about like one of the nice things that I've heard about boot environments is mm -hmm. say like if there's like say an update that goes wrong, then yeah, uh, you have that, that I see. easy rollback. Uh, you're you're more talking about snapshots, I think. So where you can roll back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a bit more like that. Oh, okay, okay. So the question was about, you know, hey, do you have boot environments or snapshots, as we call it in TrueNAS? It's it's really the same same uh, difference. Uh, you do have snapshots, and you can set that for whatever you want. If you want to set snapshots for every five minutes, you can. Uh, however, you may end up with more snapshots than you want to manage. <laughs> uh, you can set it for an hour. You can set it for once a once a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly can. Thank you for the question. All righty. Anybody else? Yeah, we'll take another question over here. Um, yeah, so my question is less about TrueNAS this time, more about IX systems. Mm -hmm. um, you said you foster a lot of open, open source projects, and I was wondering if you would contemplate offering an, uh, a solution for something like a router or something, um, whether PSD or Linux. Um, sort of compete with PFSense, OPNSense, stuff like that. Oh, got you. So the question is basically, are, are we thinking about doing some kind of um, software like a router system? Or, yeah. Um, no, we haven't. That's not come up um, at all. We tend to stick more with, um, you know, if we have access to PF or, you know, IPFS or something like that, we'll just pull in what's already available. Because um, the idea is we're trying to, with TrueNAS scale, we're trying to come up with a universal data platform. Um, where you can connect to all different types of data, you can connect to any type of cloud, and it's just making all of those connections uh, very simple. So, mm -hmm. thank you for the question. Appreciate it. All righty. Anybody else? Any questions about IX Systems' journey uh, to creating TrueNet scale? Okay. Good deal. I don't know how much time I took. I feel like it went quick. I hope I didn't throw too much information at you all too fast. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate it. And if you have any other questions, you think of something after, uh, after the talk, please feel welcome to stop by our booth and we'll, uh, we'll get you an answer on that, okay? All right, thanks everyone. Thank you.